Welcome guys to another episode of Civil Textures. My name is Freddy and today we're going to be looking at part 3 of the flow tutorial series. So to recap, in part 1 we looked at the user interface of flow and in part 2 we looked on the simulation settings and design settings. Now in part 3 we're going to actually do some work and design our drainage and we get the opportunity to name the pipes however we wished for so many years. Pipe A, pipe B, long pipe, short pipe, pipe under the building, pipe why the hell is it under the building? Well today we get this opportunity. So let's begin. To begin with we're going to break this video into three parts. First part where we import our information from CAD to flow. Second part where we'll be connecting our manholes through the links. And the third part where we're gonna define our storage and flow control unit. So, if you don't have two screens, then what I would suggest is have flow on the half screen and AutoCAD on the other. In addition, I would suggest to have your properties panel open. Now, what you want to go ahead and do is go to your notes tab in flow. And here we're going to import all the details of the manhole. So let's start with name S1. The area, let's say, is not 0 0.03 that goes into the manhole. Time of entry is 5. Cover level will keep it same as the finish floor level just for simplicity. And then diameter will keep 1.2. And then Eastings and Northings, what you want to do is select your manhole and grab your coordinates and paste them in there. That way, if you ever import your flow into PDS, it will be in the right coordinates. Now, as you can see, we created our manhole. It will appear here. If you don't have, if you cannot see it, it's just the display plan button on the bottom left. And then you have the display long section, so you can see the long section as well. Now, we're going to do the same thing for everything else. <laughs> so now that you have typed in all your information, if you look at your plan view, you can see that all of them are there. Now, the only thing is they're not connected via links. In addition, you haven't done the echo channel. Now, one way to do it is to create a dummy manhole and in the middle where the collection point is and name it channel. So you can know that the area that the channel is picking up goes in there. So to do that, we are at connecting to S4. So before S4, we can go insert new row and just type channel, give an area that it's picking up time of entry 5 same as these and then you can give it a cover level and the diameter it could have the diameters of the channel sum so we create a circle to get our coordinates and we're gonna do the same for the storage now personally i prefer to design my storage into a link type but in this tutorial we're gonna look how to do your storage in a node so before the flow control unit well a manhole we're gonna insert a new row we're gonna name it storage and then we're gonna give it some cover and the diameter and the reason we want to take the center of the storage because if you let's say assume that s4 is your storage then you have this length of pipe that's gonna be there and maybe it won't be able to take but if you keep it in the middle it's kind of splits it if that makes sense i kind of use common sense here uh, i would love if causeway flow could confirm back to us if this is more acceptable and more correct uh, way of modeling it if you're not using a link type so if we have a straight storage we just find the center of it and we copy the coordinates and you have your network well not quite right you can see these are the manholes that you created now the next step would be to connect them now to connect them we have to go to links and in the upstream node and downstream nodes we have just to tell them what we're connecting so we're connecting s1 with s2 and then s3 with s2 and you can even leave space so it would make it more simple then 
channel with S4 and then S2 with S4 and then from we leave a space again S4 to storage and then from storage we're gonna go to flow control be careful this is a uh, case sensitive so if you do an uppercase and uh, in the manhole but you do a lowercase in links it won't recognize it and from flow control control to outflow now you have noticed that flow started filling the information for us like upstream invert level downstream fall slope etc and even upsizing the diameter of the pipe the reason it did this is because we had the design capacity and cover auto design on and in the design settings we already told them that we want a cover depth of 1.2 we want a cleansing velocity of one a maximum rainfall of 35 and time of entry now if we go to links you can see all this information there now obviously if it's blue it's flow calculated but if you want to do it yourself you can just go ahead and do it simply by just replacing the values for let's say example we are down uh, our upstream invert level we don't want it 6.2 we want it 6.5 for some reason and you can see the value change to black and this says yellow because it's uh, less than the specified minimum but if we went 6.1 it will still be fine because it's more than the specified minimum 1.2 we're at 1.3 and you can even change the slope to 1 in 80 for example and what it's a good practice is as soon as you're 100 percent sure about that's the details you want for your manhole and pipe you just go right click and turn off auto design if you want to add a gully let's say at pipe one what you want to do is you want to add the entry point so we want to add the area that the gully is picking up at 50 percent so halfway and the time of entry is five and if we click somewhere else and then go back to pipe one you can see the area is there if you hit the minimize button it goes away now as you can see here uh, everything has been modeled nicely and the good thing about flow you can click and see the properties of each element now the next step would be defining our flow control so if we go to flow control and in nodes type the name of the manhole that your flow control unit will be in uh, in this case our manhole is named flow control then we can select a list of control types let's go with the hydro brake design depth simplicity one and the standard five liters per second for greenfield sites if the greenfield is too low we click calculate and if I'm not mistaken, Flow is working with Hydro International into having this software tool within Flow. And if we have to upsize, a message will appear here to upsize the outer diameter. But in this case, we don't. Now, the next thing would be to go to storage and we're going to uh, type the where we want our storage. It's in manhole name storage. And then we want to define a depth area infiltration now let me maximize it so you can see clear what's happening so we say we want our storage in this manhole and we want a tank we have more options but we're going to focus on tank today and a later video where i will go through almost all the storage types that we have so hit the sub button so we won't have an infiltration safety factor two the safety factor can be found in the syria suds manual and it varies depending on your situation porosity we can leave it at one but usually you should use the 0.95 now if our tank is one meter deep we go zero then one and then 1.01 and then we say let's say it's 150 let's say 75 cubes we just type 75 75 and then zero the 75 is square meters because the area so basically we're telling at the bottom is 75 square meters and then at the top is 75 and then zero so we just close the tank and our tank is designed if we go to 3d model you can see the tank is there now if you create the link type the storage would be more accurate in my opinion but i'll show it on a later video and this is how we design our drainage network so I hope you found this video useful and it's pretty intuitive so you can work with it. It's like everything's straightforward and flows 
help section is very helpful. If you stuck with something, just open that one and it will explain everything. In the next video, I will be going through the uh, simulation analysis and how we can present our results and everything. So I hope you find this video useful. I would like to thank uh, Causeway for letting us use the license to bring this video to you. See you next time.